Hello everyone and welcome back to ASP.NET Core 1.0. My name is Steve Bishop and in this video we're going to talk about installing Entity Framework Core. So I kind of want to give you guys a jumping off point to start with and this really should be a good reference for you for anything and everything you need to learn with ASP.NET Core. Now it's not going to be a uh, a complete library of every single situation and scenario you're going to encounter. However, the docs.asp.net website is a wonderful starting point for you to discover what you need to do in order to get certain components in your ASP.net core website working. So we're going to start off with the docs.asp.net website. And from there, we're going to jump to the section called Working with Data. And this section is explicitly for the Entity Framework section. Now, inside of this Working with Data, you'll find that there's actually an Entity Framework 6, and then there's an Entity Framework Core, which is the one that we will be selecting. And inside of the Entity Framework Core, you'll notice that there are a couple of tutorials about how to set up a new database, which is also known as Code First, or you can use an existing database, which is something called database first. I will briefly talk about both of these methods in this series, uh, but we're going to start off with the code first method, since that is really the most popular way to go for, uh, for most developers. Now, obviously, some of you will have an existing database and you're going to want to build a website off of that database. So I'm going to give you guys the tools and the knowledge about how to grab that database that already exists and bring it into your application. So then we're going to need to jump into the package manager console. And this is the NuGet package manager console that some of you are probably already familiar with. With Entity Framework, it is a, an essential tool for how you install Entity Framework and also how you deploy your different versions of your, uh, of your database, because you're going to need to sync up what you have in your code with what's out there in the database. And the way you do that is through a set of commands in the package manager console. So I'm going to give you kind of a little brief look into the package manager. I'm not going to go into everything in all great sort of detail about what the package manager console is. You'll just see what it is in this video. And uh, we're going to do a couple of commands in it to get our entity framework installed. And there's actually three commands that we need to issue here. It's uh, install package, and it's all three of these different packages. The second one, you'll notice there are the tools uh, installation package. We need to also have a hyphen pre because it is a pre-release version of these tools. And we will be using the tools in this series, so you will want to be doing uh, the installation of that tools package. You'll also notice the third one here, install package, and we have the SQL Server .design. That is actually the package that contains uh, the database first mechanism to go out and look at the, an existing database and create a DB context and the, re the relevant classes. All of that comes from that SQL, des uh, SQL Server .design package. Then lastly, we'll take a look at the project.json file. Uh, and JSON is JavaScript object notation. So if you're not familiar with JavaScript or JavaScript object notation, I recommend you go and just do a quick little bit of research. It's not that difficult. It's not that complex. It's just kind of a way of noting different objects. And we actually use that pretty extensively using the project.json uh, project file. And inside of that project.json file, we're going to drill down to the tools section and under there, we need to install the Microsoft.EntityFrameworkCore.Tools, and we're going to select the 1.0.0 Preview to Final version. So without further delay, let's go ahead and open up our browser first and take a look at the docs.asp.net website. So automatically, we get redirected to the latest version of our docs when we go to docs.asp.net. And underneath the section, Working with Data, we're going to find that we can get started with Entity Framework 6, or we can get started with Entity Framework Core. And you can use Entity Framework 6 with your, uh, your ASP.NET websites and web applications, but you're going to want to use the Entity Framework Core if you're planning on any sort of uh, cross-operating systems, if you're, you know, uh, if 
maybe you might want to host your application sometime in the future on a Linux box or an, uh, an Apple OS X, you're going to want to get the Entity Framework Core because that's going to contain the libraries that are cross compatible. So we're going to go ahead and click on the Entity Framework Core. And you can see that we have two tutorials that are available, one that will work with a brand new database and one that is an existing database. And you can even see they've put in their notation here, database first. So this is the, the, the new database one is where we're going to do a code first method and an existing database is where you would do the database first. So let's go ahead and select first on the new database. And I'm just gonna quickly scroll down here. You're, you're more than welcome to read through everything and, and I really would recommend that you do because this is some pretty important information. But the installation of the Entity Framework is what I wanna show you in this video. So we can see that it's asking us to open the Nugget Package Manager console. And then we're going to run this install package Microsoft Entity Framework Core SQL Server. So I'm just going to go ahead and highlight this and copy it. And then I'm going to go to my Visual Studio window. And in Visual Studio, you can go up to Tools, Nougat Package Manager, Package Manager Console. So from here, you'll notice that we can select from different sources. By default, it wants to go to nougat.org, but you could also do some offline packages and you could do all so that it would pick from both of these. But nougat.org is fine as long as that's been selected, that's fine, either that or all. And then you wanna make sure that your default project is the project that you're working in. And that would be the Contoso Core RTM package that we created from the earlier video when we migrated over to the RTM version. Now, all I'm going to do is go ahead and paste in that command that I got from the website. So we can see installed hyphen package, and then it's Microsoft.EntityFrameworkCore.SQL Server. So let's go ahead and hit enter. Now we'll notice that we get an extra line here in our project.json file, and we also see restoring packages here. And if we wanted to, we could actually take a look at the output here of our packages. And we'll notice that we get a bunch of packages that are going to be installed here in our output window. So there we see installing all of these different libraries that are associated with the Entity Framework Core. So after all of that has been installed, and once again, we now have this uh, inside of our dependencies section. So here's our dependencies uh, object. Inside of that, we have a reference to Microsoft.EntityFrameworkCore.SQL Server and it's going out and grabbing version 1.0.0. As long as you see this in your dependencies section of your project.json file, then you know that your Entity Framework Core has been installed properly. Now we can go ahead and head back to the website and let's continue reading on through. And we'll see that the next step is to install the package microsoft.entityframeworkcore.tools and hyphen pre. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy that and I'm gonna go back to my Visual Studio window, and I'm gonna go back to the Package Manager console window, and let's go ahead and paste that and enter to run that installation. Okay, so now we have another set of uh, packages that are being restored. If I click on the output, we can see we start to get uh, a bunch of other libraries that are installed for the Entity Framework Core tools. Okay, so here we are back at our package manager console, and now we can see, once again, the dependencies object has changed, and there's been an addition of the Microsoft.EntityFrameworkCore.Tools with preview to final, and we, sh we saw that when we went ahead and did the installation of the package. Now we can go back to the documentation and see if there's anything else we need to do. And sure enough, it says we need to open the project.json file. We need to locate the tools section and add the EF commands as shown below. And that would be this entity framework core tools preview to, dot, uh, preview to final. So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this. And now under the project, Dot JSON. If you don't already have a tools section, you're welcome to make one. Uh, you just put tools in quotation marks, make sure that it's inside of that open bracket and it comes after your dependencies. Okay, so we can see that the dependencies closing bracket is right there with a comma 
and then we have our tools there. And inside of the brackets for our tools, we can go ahead and add now the reference to our Microsoft Entity Framework uh, core.tools and make sure that the version number matches the same as the dependencies up here where we have 1.0.0 preview to hyphen final. So just make sure those two versions match. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and save my project.json file. And once again, we're gonna see restoring packages and we can look at the output again and see if there's any other uh, packages that get installed along with this. Okay, so we're done installing the Microsoft.Entity Framework Core.Tools with Preview 2 hyphen final. Same thing here. Now you may have a different version of this, okay? You may not need that pre. So just double check your documentation here in the in the docs of ASP.NET uh, of ASP.NET Entity Framework Core to make sure that this command isn't a little different. They may not have the pre by the time that you watch this video. So just make sure whatever the command is that they place here in the docs is what you run. And we'll notice now that it's suggesting that we go ahead and create our model. Now this is gonna be what we're gonna cover in the next video, but as long as you have in your dependencies object here of your project.json, you have a reference to SQL, the uh, Entity Framework Core.SQL Server 1.0.0 and the Entity Framework Core.Tools Preview 2 hyphen final. And then you also have in the Tools object, we have an, a reference to the Entity Framework Core Tools with the same version number that matches what we put up here in our dependencies. Then you have successfully installed Entity Framework Core. Now that's fine, but I also wanna take it one step further here for everybody who needs to also set up for a database that already exists. Right now we've just set up for the code first version and it wouldn't hurt us even if we plan on doing a code first version to put in uh, a reference here for anybody that has an existing database. And if I scroll down here to the section of installing entity framework, We'll notice that there's an additional package that we can install and that would be the design package so i'm going to go ahead and copy this install package microsoft.entityframeworkcore.sqlserver.design and i'm going to go ahead and in our dependency or actually excuse me down here in our package manager console i'm going to go ahead and paste that and let's go ahead and install and then we can take a look at the output and see all of the different libraries that get installed. And once that is done, we have successfully installed the uh, Entity Framework SQL Server design tool so that we can go out to an existing database and extract the information from that to create our DB context and our model classes. So we're gonna cover that in a later video, how to do that to extract your DB context and your models from another database. But as long as you've got these three dependencies and this tool set up in your project.json, you're ready to go with Entity Framework, both in the code first and in the database first setup. So either way, you're ready to go. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and stop here and we'll move on to the code first version of creating a DB context and our model.